Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plast TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of a national dailies. We call it Off the Press. We do have Okunabo and Kotaria who will join us, a public affairs analyst to make sense all of all of the headlines this morning. Uh, I start off with the leadership newspaper. Looking at the front page of the leadership newspaper, the board caption reads, Concern over vacuum in INEC as five national commissioners retire next week. Uh, that's the bold story you find this morning. And underneath you've got riders, president yet to make nominations. Southeast, South, South, Northeast, North Central, Southwest may be unrepresented. No cost for lamb, that's what INEC is quoted to say. And uh, the electoral bill, President Mohammed Buhari will consider public interest before assenting uh, the Attorney General of the Federation. Federal government laments high malaria mortality rate. And it's also uh, a caption you find this morning. And just before we move away from the leadership newspaper, gunmen attack Play 2 Correctional Center. DSS denies report of extrajudicial killings in Southeast. Reps give postal officers powers to search aircraft. Subsidy removal would worsen hardship. Uh, that's what the PFN is also quoted to say as regard the issue of subsidy. And uh, you also have the NDIC pays 133 billion naira to depositors of failed banks. Uh, this is some of the headlines we're able to take this morning on the leadership newspaper. Away from that, we move on next to the daily independent newspaper. The banner headline for this morning, no sanity at FX market 123 days after sales ban to BDCs. For well, the rider there, analysts want dollar backlog clear to hold Naira devaluation. Other stories on the front page of the Daily Independent, federal government draws flax over improper national carrier rebirth. Uh, right there, a project lacks transparency dead on arrival. That's according to stakeholders. CNPP slams NLC TUC over fuel subsidy, accuses federal government of deceit in subsidy implementation. Beside that one, just below it, a tanker explosion kills mother, grandchild in Abel Kuta. Also, EFCC raids former governor Daniel's hotel, arrests suspected fraud stars. I'm not supposed to be in politics. Jonathan, that's former president, good luck, Jonathan. Forces gathered to fight booty led APC National Caretaker Committee, that's above the masthead of the Daily Independent. Pirate kills or pirates kill four, abduct six oil workers in Bayelsa. Gunmen trapped in Joss prison after attacking custodial center. Uh, on the red tree below the paper, gunmen kill two policemen, born their bodies in a number of states. Those are the stories you can find on the Daily Independent this Monday morning. Let's move away from the Daily Independent newspaper and check out the nation. Uh, the board caption reads, Troops take over Plateau Custodian Center after attack. Uh, that's what you have uh, this morning. Troops take over Plateau Custodial Center after attacks. Gunmen trapped in facility. Situation under control, says NCS. Omicron COVID-19 variant triggers global alerts. And more countries record cases, reintroduce travel bans. World well, Bank okays $5.8 billion, and you also have a vaccine cash for Nigeria and others. Securities threatened in Southeast over terror alert, and five INA commissioners to retire December the 5th. Nigeria to benefit from $4.3 trillion digital services. That's it on the Nation newspaper this morning. And finally, to the punch this morning, federal government bans 91 billionaires, VIPs, jets, uh, insist on 30 billion naira duty, uh, with three riders there. Top pastors, business moguls, banks and oil firm CEOs affected, 
NCAA F fan NAMA get letters to ground affected planes. Aviation Ministry customs on war path over flight ban directive. Other stories on the Punch newspaper above the masthead, banks earnings hit 2.64 trillion naira in nine months, according to our report. As power, gen as power generation uh, falls by 849.2 megawatts, Genco's blame consumers. Ramaphosa visit slash Omicron. Virologist Difa as federal government lists delegate for testing on day two all right brain drain we're expecting our best doctors says nma president nigeria's exchange rate discouraging investors fueling inflation that's according to the world bank motorist commuters grown in lagos ibadan road gridlock federal government says diversion will last six days more stories on the punch. APC government has failed or will lose AKT government election or governorship election. Olujimi, as an introvert, I shouldn't have been in politics. Jonathan. All right, other stories. Uh, minister proposes castration for rapists, sexual perverts. Grandma, granddaughter die. Hoodlums scoop fuel, attack firemen, others in Ogun Ong Ong tanker explosion. Nigerians will experience multi-dimensional -dimension suffering with subsidy removal, according to the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. Operatives raid Daniel's hotel, strip guests naked, ex-governor decries shooting. And those are the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Good morning, Okunubo and Butaria. Uh, let's have you join the conversation at Good this morning. point in time. Can you hear me? Good morning. All right, so let, let's Can look I... at... All right, so we go straight to the conversation, the leadership newspaper, and that's also dominating all of the papers this morning. The attack on the correctional center mm -hmm. in Plateau State. What are your thoughts? I think um, it's... It's one convoluted system, and to me, uh, it's not just an attack uh, by the inmates or just by criminals. I also have a conviction that uh, some politicians are behind it. Most of the inmates probably they don't want them to squeal. I agree. Yes, you have the military, you have criminals in there, and the criminals, their partners outside will just want to release them. But I also believe, because if you look at the way the success with which most of these attacks are carried out, you realize that unless you have uh, an accomplice, unless in the system, both in the correctional services and uh, mostly in the correctional services or the police, it will be very difficult for most of these attackers to carry out they attack successfully. So most of them probably would have been paid heavily to compromise. And so they become complicitors. So while they are, uh, the criminals, they are, they are, their cohorts will definitely want to relieve the inmate, I also believe that some politicians who use this uh, character for some uh, criminal activities are also behind most of these attacks, so that those in there are not going to squeal. All right, um, um, Apunabo, um, aside from what happened in Plateau State, uh, let's talk about something that is uh, also trending on the Daily Independent. Uh, their, their banner headline this morning is on the economy. Uh, specifically, it's been about f four months since uh, the uh, sale ban to BDC is talking about the FX markets. And um, uh, a whole lot of stakeholders believe that uh, there is no sanity. What are your thoughts? It is very difficult to have sanity in that area because it's one area that is uh, uh, immersed in corruption. Yes, the CBN is trying its best to sanitize the forest matter. But don't forget that that is just the CBN governor. He will be very much surprised that his lieutenant, who also have his DDTs and who also operate illegal forex markets, will definitely want to from the efforts of the CBN government. 
And more so, when you talk, how many people will go to the central bank today to get the uh, foreign exchange? It's not that easy. If I want to get foreign exchange, I'll just go to one mile and buy the corner, give me my money and buy my forex and travel. So it's definitely, and those malam, those who are selling, they have their bosses, and these their bosses are highly connected. They also work with most of these CBN officials. So even if you have that ban, that you ban BDC, for example, means you just ban BDC, but you did not kill the people who are operating the, the BDC. They can operate behind the, 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 uh, the, 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 their offices. They can operate from their homes. They can operate from anywhere. It just, that is just an office. But the money can be exchanged in any place, at, at various places, without the central bank knowing. So it, will, it is very difficult to sanitize uh, the forex market. Extremely difficult to sanitize. What the federal government should do, <coughs> excuse me, is to address the economic challenges. And that is to a very large extent, will put an end to most of this uh, illegal transactions that are going on. Because since they've been banned, they are now illegal. Put an end to most of these illegal transactions, unless that is done. It will be like catching the mist. It will, it will be a very difficult task, an awful task, to sanitize the forest mine. Because I don't need, I can, I can operate right from this office, this my study room. I can operate. All I need to do is let people know that I, I sell dollars. And they'll come to me and, and buy their dollars and walk away. It's as simple as that. I don't need to go to my office that is known to the world to sell my dollars. I, or, or my, my, my pounds or whatever. I can do that even right in my car. So how do you sanitize a situation like that? It is extremely difficult. Let the dollars, let this foreign exchange be made easily accessible. If people can just walk into the bank and just buy, because it's definitely cheaper there, and just buy, and they will have it. Most times you go to the bank, they tell you they don't have. And maybe you have your son abroad, who is telling you, Daddy, if this fee is not paid, I'll be, I'll, I'm not going to be allowed into the exam house tomorrow. Daddy, if this, fee, if this fee is not paid, this amount is not paid, I can't go in for my surgery tomorrow. And you expect that man to wait for the bureaucratic procedure to get a, a deforest from the central bank? It's not possible. You just go to the next market, to the next broker and buy. So oh, it okay. is extremely difficult to sanitize it. The oh. federal government will have to make this money available and easily accessible. That is the only way that it can be sanitized. Because I... if the is going for let's say four fifty four fifty naira to a dollar. Mm. I will not want to go and buy for five hundred and eighty naira to a dollar from an abroad. I will not want to do that. I want to go and get purchased from the bank there to be four fifty naira to a dollar. But I, you say four fifty naira to a dollar, I would not have access to it. It's not possible. I get all of that open um, open up my question as a follow up to that is that just how do you ensure that Nigerians don't tend to want to tweak the system to favor them? You mentioned them a case where they would ordinarily would want to get from the, the the banks as opposed to the you know parallel market where they can get it at a higher rate. For instance, uh, the the banks would only pay to genuine customers who may have genuine reason. Maybe you mentioned school fees. Uh, people with PTAs who want to travel abroad, but Sometimes people present um, international passport and say they want to buy, you know, for PTAs. At the end of the day, they divert the money and don't even get to travel. And then those who genuinely need it don't get the effects. You just repeated exactly what I said. I said it's almost impossible to get from the direction, from the central bank. Mm. And that, because it is hard just to get from that bank, you now rely on the black market. Now, if I can have access to it, that is what I mean, that what the federal government should do is to ensure that people have easy access, not just access, easy access. That if I wake up this morning now and I go, you saw case of people go for PTA, and they, when they get the money, they will not uh, they will not travel, they just use that as a decoy to get money from the central bank. Because they actually go back to sell at the black market. That is what a lot of them do. And most the central bank officials are quite aware. It's not as if they are not aware. They are seized of this fact. But they are also complicitors because they also get their own share of the money. Most of these people who operate these BDCs and so on are operating on behalf of people. They are, they, they, by proxy, the central, most of them are owned by the BDCs, are owned by bankers, are owned by top government functionaries, especially those in the oil sector. You tell these ones are just the errand boys. So that is what is going on. So it's a cartel. So it's 
So while the federal government comes up with a policy, the same people working for the federal government will try as much as they can to circumvent it. That is what is going on. But if you have a sincere government, it's a question of corruption. If you have a sincere government that will ensure that the due process is followed and that these monies are available and accessible, don't come and tell me there is no forex when I need the money urgently. You cannot tell me there is none. If the government ensures that these monies are available and easily accessible to a very large extent, because now you can also have an internal mechanism to ensure that all those it's not it's not a one a one day a one day affair, it's not an overnight issue. You have an entire to ensure that all those involved in this illegal act are detected and dealt with. It might take three, four years, five years, but it's a gradual process and at the end of the day we are going to sanitize the system. But when these persons are being carrying out this act with impunity, how do you expect to sanitize? Because they are also part of the system. That is the corruption. And I will not, on a very serious note, I will not subscribe to a situation where I will wait for maybe one week, two weeks, or three weeks to get forex to send to my son or to send to my daughter. I will not. I will just go to the nearest market. And that is why we have this business is thriving. So it depends on the federal government. It's nestled on the shoulders of the federal government to ensure that the monies are available. That is number one. And easily accessible. That is number two. And then they set up an internal mechanism to fish out the bad eggs that are trying to truncate, trying to stimulate the efforts of the federal government to sanitize uh, 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 the system, the market. All right. Well said, Oponabo. Okay, uh, Oponabo Nkutaria, let's move away from that now. Let's also quickly look at, um, you know, still on the leadership newspaper. The fact that the DSS denies a report of extrajudicial killings in the South is... What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's a well-known fact that uh, there are extrajudicial killings. You don't expect the DSS to own up. <laughs> that would be indicting itself. But we all know that. Uh, in fact, the police, as any policeman told you, I certainly investigated or when it involves a prominent man in the country or in a police officer's reality. Has any policeman owned up that it, what he did was extrajudicial? To kill somebody extrajudicially? No, I mean, of course, they would deny it. You should expect that denial. So it's not surprising. But those who are there, I cannot sit down here to tell you yes. I cannot sit down here to bow for the veracity of the claim because I was not there. But those who were there said, and they are still saying, insisting, that those who were killed were killed extrajudicially. So all we want is for the federal government to investigate and come out with the staff, although with the present government, I don't think uh, anything will come out of it because uh, this is one government that has lost, lost its credibility. So I sincerely don't expect, and that's why you find out that the, the, there is a lot of flax uh, uh, <coughs> concerning the legal state judicial panel of inquiry on EMSA. Because what they expected is not what the panel came out, it's not a recommendation of the findings of the panel. So I don't expect anything to come out of it. Those who are, who are dead, sorry, the panel should lick their wounds. There is nothing you can do about it, but I don't expect DSS to also own up. I sincerely don't expect DSS to also own up. But though the families involved should come up with proof to show that the DSS is the one, we are the, DSS, we are the ones that killed, the DSS men are the ones that killed those uh, 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 people that died. And if they come up with that proof, of course, the civil society will carry it. Murder case has no lifespan. It has no lifespan. It can drag on for the rest of, until those that choose uh, uh, die, the mother can start to drag on. So they should come up with a proof and initiate a legal action. So that even if it takes another five, six, seven, eight, ten years, one day justice will be done. All right. Um, other stories. Uh, federal government draws flax over improper national carrier rebirth. Project lacks transparency, dead on arrival. Uh, that's according to stakeholders. What exactly are your thoughts upon about concerning uh, the rebirth of Nigeria's national carrier? We live in a country where we maximize the minimum and minimize the maximum. We are talking of fuel subsidy. We are talking of uh, a serenely climate economic atmosphere, political engineers overheated, and you're talking of national uh, carrier. I don't think for now it is necessary. Honestly, I'm not interested in that story because... Uh, we all know the cost implications. We cannot even maintain it. 
we cannot even maintain it for now. Where do we have the money to maintain it? They say there is no money. The country is in particular. And you want to come up with the national government? For what? What is that? What's the reasonableness in that? Address the nagging issues facing Nigeria. Nigerians are hungry. There is hunger. It's palpable and pervasive. So stop talking about national career for now. It's not a priority as we speak right now. The minister is just looking for an avenue to set our line in his pocket. It's as simple as that. Oh, we are, we are approaching the crunch time. We are almost in the twilight of administration. What am I going to benefit? What am I going to live with? Okay, let me come up with this idea. That is exactly what is going on. But I don't think it is necessary for now. For now, it is not necessary. We should not even be talking of national career for now. Okay, um, and, and this has to do with, you know, our health. Uh, the Omicron variant that has called for global concern and also the restriction uh, for countries not to travel, I mean, the travel ban. Uh, do you think that, you know, travel ban has been very effective in the fight against COVID-19? And secondly, what would be the implication for our economy and the entire continent? Well, talking of uh, if travel ban is necessary, they see it as one of the measures to uh, cut down on the spread, to reduce the spread of the virus. Uh, I, for one, I don't even believe it is necessary. Even this issue of, uh, you might definitely disagree with John, the decency of wearing masks and so on, I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary. They should just think of, and because we, have, we keep having variants, tomorrow we'll have another one. The day after we'll have another one. So uh, what kind of life are we living? Well, I don't think we need that travel ban. We do in, in, in vaccination, and after the vaccination, it is okay. All you need to do is prove that you, you've been vaccinated. And after that, I think you should be allowed to travel. Because it's having a, a, a negative effect on the economy globally, not just Nigeria, globally. And it's also affecting businesses. When we had the lockdown in Nigeria, many, many, many uh, uh, businesses suffered. And many are yet to recover. Those that are happy, we are the wives who had their husbands at home. That's all. And the children who are also happy to see their father. But after a time, after a while, that, that happiness was short lived because the father could not provide anymore for the family. He wasn't going out again. And so, what happened? What else set it? So, I don't think we need all those lockdowns and all those things. Vaccinate after the vaccination, you can move freely. Definitely one day scientists will come up with a solution to all these problems. In, initially, we had malaria, it, malaria still kills. We had, we had, in those days, gonorrhea. We had Al Capone, it was syphilis that killed it. These things, I mean, they, they will come to pass someday. But coming up with these stringent measures of a ban of the days, I don't think those things are necessary for now. They are not. Because it's going to affect us, grow, grow, it's going to affect the world economically. Not politically, but economically. Because businesses cannot be transacted. And what is going to happen once you don't transact, even the government offices are going to be shut. Most government offices are going to be shut. And right. if the offices are shut, I just said the government to pay salaries. Then you right, don't uh, work. All right, thank you so much for your, your thoughts uh, concerning all of those issues that have been raised uh, from the front pages of um, the dailies. Uh, we have been speaking with uh, Apunabo Inkotaria, a public affairs analyst, analyzing uh, the papers this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and we'll see what happened this day in history many years ago. Stay with us.